Hello class, this is Miss Augustine. We are still working in chapter 12, which is about the gas laws, and today we're going to talk about the combined gas law. But first, let's talk about the three laws that we have discussed up to this point. The first is Boyle's law, which is constant temperature. According to Boyle's law, pressure and volume have an inverse relationship. When the pressure goes up, the volume goes down, and vice versa. And again, that is at constant temperature. Charles's law takes place at constant pressure. A good way to think about Charles's law is it explains why hot air balloons work. And that's because as the temperature increases, the volume increases. So this is a direct relationship. As the volume increases, the temperature increases. And that's why hot air balloons are able to fly, because the hot air is less dense than the surrounding air. So the equation we use for Charles's law is that V1 over T1, initial conditions, equals V2 over T2, final conditions. And then Gay-Lussac's law, which is the constant volume law, recall that Gay-Lussac's law explains why it's a bad idea to heat a closed container. That's why aerosol cans always say do not incinerate, because at constant volume, if the temperature increases, the pressure would also increase to a point where the can would explode. So Gay-Lussac's law states that pressure is directly um, proportional to Kelvin temperature. So P1 over T1, initial conditions, equals P2 over T2, final conditions. Recall that when you're doing gas law calculations, temperature must always be converted first to Kelvin because the temperature where the volume and pressure of a gas are zero corresponds to negative 273.15 degrees C, which is zero Kelvin. So if you use degree C instead of Kelvin, you could find yourself calculating a negative volume or a negative pressure, which would be meaningless. One more point is that all of these are talking about a fixed quantity of a gas, so the number of moles is constant. So it's convenient to put all of these laws into one combined gas law. So it's a single expression that combines the three laws, Boyle's, Charles, and Gay-Lussac's, and it looks like this. P1, V1 over T1 equals P2, V2 over T2. Or P1, V1, T2 equals P2, V2, T1. So one of the things about this law that's so convenient is it gives you all three laws. So for instance, if we were talking about a situation where temperature was constant, then T1 would be equal to T2, and so it would drop out of the equation. So that gives you Boyle's law, P1, V1 equals P2, V2. If, for instance, pressure were constant, now P1 would be equal to P2, and that would result in Charles's law, V1 over T1 equals V2 over T2. And if the volume were constant, V1 would be equal to V2. And so now we have Gay-Lussac's law, P1 over T1 equals P2 over T2. If you don't like fractions, you can cross multiply to get it all on one line with no denominator to worry about, and that would be P1 V1 T2 equals P2 V2 T1. And again, always convert temperature to Kelvin. So when we remember that this equation is referring to a fixed amount of gas, we recall that P1 V1 over T1 equals P2 over V2, P2 V2 over T2, and K is our constant. So now let's just look, and again, we're not changing the number of moles, at a combined gas law problem. So problem one, a gas with a volume of 3 liters at 40 degrees C has a pressure of 2.5 atmospheres. What will the volume of this gas be at a pressure of 1.5 atmospheres and a temperature of 90 degrees C? So let's identify P1 is 2.5 atmospheres, P2 is 1.5 atmospheres, V1 is 3 liters, V2 is what we're solving for. T1 is 40 degrees C, so when you add 273, you get 313K. 
Kelvin. 90 degrees C is our T2. Add 273 to it, and we get 363. So now we have our variables. And this is our equation. So we're going to have to rearrange this equation to solve for V2. So that's going to involve a little multiplication and division. So P1 V1 T2 equals P2 V2 T1. Therefore, V2 is P1 V1 over T1 times T2 divided by P2 over T1. That's a lot of variables. So V2 now is going to be 2.5 atmospheres times 3 liters times 363 Kelvin divided by 1.5 atmospheres and 313 Kelvin. Now, for these types of problems, super important that your units are the same. So atmospheres and atmospheres, liters will solve for liters, temperature converted to Kelvin. So when you plug all then this into your calculator, and to remind you, it's going to be 2.5 times 3.0 times 363 divided by 1.5 divided by 313. We're going to cancel our units. And the number that our calculator gives us is 5.7987. Now going back up here to the original problem, we had two significant digits rounding to two significant digits. So here the 9 would be our second significant digit. We would have to round up, so that would give us 5.8. Problem 2, a gas occupies 3.5 liters at 600 millimeters of pressure and 22 degrees C. What will the temperature be? So we're solving for T2. If the volume is changed to 1.8, so volume went down and pressure goes up from 600 to 760. Identifying variables. 600 millimeters for P1, 760 for P2. V1 is 3.5. V2 is 1.8. T1 is going to be 295 Kelvin. We're solving for T2. Now, this step is rather important. And the reason it's so important is it's very easy to put the pressures in the wrong place and the volumes and the temperatures. So with our equation, since there are six variables, it is absolutely critical that you identify your variables so you put them in the correct location. So cross multiplying, we get P1V1 T2 equals P2V2 T1. Solving for T2, it's going to be P2V2 T1 over P1 V1. Now let's plug in the numbers. So here I've plugged in all of the numbers. Before I uh, plug it into my calculator, I'm going to divide, or excuse me, uh, cancel out my units. Remember that it's going to be this times this times this, divided by this, divided by this. If it's in the denominator, you have to divide more than once here. And that gives us 192.17. Looking up here at the top, we only had two significant digits. Our second significant digit is the 9. The number immediately following it is a 2. 4 and below, you let it go, so we round that down to 190 Kelvin. So those are my two combined gas law problems, and this is Ms. Augustine signing off.